The next thing to learn about is shape and volume. So shape and volume is kind of like, so once you have the gesture, which is the spirit of the pose, you have to have shape and volume, which is how the pose exists in space, how this figure exists in space. Like, is this person very large? Is this person very small? Is this person very angular? Is this person very curvy? So to understand shape and volume, you have to have this kind of generic figure in your head that most, this is the kind of generic figure that you warp and you make larger or smaller or curvier or skinnier depending on what the model is like that you say in front of you. So I like to think of this as just like a generic. Like a, it's like a mannequin that I shape depending on what I'm looking at. Yeah, figure drawing like from a, fi Figure drawing never gets old. Like I know, there is uh, this guy at work. He's like forty something, and he still goes every week. Every week we have figure drawing free twice a week at DreamWorks. So that's what that's usually the one that I go to. So the average person is six to eight heads high. Let's hope that I can do this on the tablet. The average adult human being. Children will be less heads high because they tend to have bigger heads. For their growing bodies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to do an adult male. So he's going to be about, er, a tall adult female. So she's going to be about seven and a half heads high. Got crazy long limbs. So obviously the first head forms the chin. Then the second is going to be at the nipple line. The fourth is going to be the bottom of the pubic bone. And the six is going to be roughly where the knee is. Most people are actually like, um, they're actually kind of the same height torso wise, but the length of their legs change. That's why it can be anywhere between six and eight. But for somebody who is seven and a half, usually their knee falls at around the sixth head point. So I'm going to start at the pubic bone. And I'm going to oh, use... I'm going to use the, these heads again to like get the sense of the width of the body. So the body is usually on average about, um, about two heads wide from shoulder to shoulder. Photoshop. This is what happens when I don't name my layers. And so the bottom of the pubic bone is there. I'm going to drop a line down to just help, my, help ease my sense of symmetry. So I'm drawing a box which is going to represent the entire torso. And I will taper it off for shoulders. Then I'm going to divide the box in the middle. And this is going to be the bottom of the rib cage. And then I'm going to divide this in half again. And three quarters of the box is the top of the pelvis. Note that the bottom of the pelvis is the pubic bone, so that's the box. Usually a session is good like two to four hours.
ish. Yeah. Sometimes they have costume figure drawing too, where you draw people in like pretty outfits and stuff. Mm -hmm. So once I have um, once I have this box here, then I'm gonna draw in the rib cage and the pelvis. So because this is a woman, I'm gonna actually have a pelvis flare out a little because women have wider hips for childbirth. So with the knee, I'm going to put the knees in. And the feet will be down here. So now that I have the pelvis and the rib cage, I'm going to connect the two. I hear G-talk. Is that me? That's me. So this is the nipple line for a man. Like, so the pectoral muscles would be here. So the breasts hang off of the pectoral muscles. So they'd be around here. They're like comma shapes. They attach here and then under the arm. I mean, it really depends on how big your boobs are. Please don't be into those like crazy like Z cup size things that they draw in like horrible manga. Please don't do that. So I'm just connecting all these landmark points that I've drawn down to make the figure. Again, every person is different. This is just my personal model. My personal generic mannequin. I like to do generic mannequins with like longer legs and stuff like that. Like in my drawings, you'll see that all, most of my um, most of my artwork, the legs are longer than they should be, simply because I like doing that. So, the technique I'm using here to measure out where the arms should be is like is something my instructor Kevin Chen at Concept Design Academy told me, and he says he views the body as a Swiss Army knife. So, the the elbow, when when it's um, down, the elbow lines up with the bottom of the rib cage. So it's like, kind of like having a Swiss Army knife. You're folding your arm down, but if you're to lift it up, you unfold the knife out, and it's still going to be the same length. And then the principle, the same principle applies to the forearm. The forearm is about the same as the upper arm, slightly shorter, but. Uh, but again, it's it's like the Swiss Army knife. You can just draw these arcs that go from um, that go from landmark to landmark, so that you can estimate how long something should be. And so, like. The ones that I commonly use are, it's mostly I use this, I like using this technique for the limbs. So what I mostly use this for is the, the Swiss Army knife technique. So here's the rib cage. So I swing the upper arm out. And then from the top of the upper arm, I get the, What's up? the heck? Oh. Sorry. Alright, from the top of the arm, I get the lower arm. Also use it for uh, for people when they are seated because you can do it with the legs too. So 
so this is a torso. Then I can swing out the leg from the top of the chest. And then I can swing out the shin from the upper leg. Swiss Army Knife uh, shortcut. So as you can see, um, men and women are kind of defined by um, So men and women are um, are shaped differently. Like, I, there's a I feel sometimes there's a misconception that women are all about breasts. Like that when you draw a woman, you just add breasts to something. No, kind of not really. Um, because dudes have breasts too. That is true. Dudes have breasts. Yeah. Um, it's actually more about the ratio or, or the shape that occurs between the rib cage and the pelvis. So in most um, in most men, the rib cage is larger or wider than the pelvis, and they have broader shoulders. So it ends up ends up being broad like that. And the overall guy, like especially, you totally see this in superheroes. The guy shape tends to be an upside down triangle. I'm really exaggerating it for this. And then because their shoulders are so wide. Guys' arms hang out to the side. And then I have to come back in. For women, it's usually more, the hips tend to be wider, you know, because, you know, you got to give up, kids got to come from somewhere. <laughs> and so, because, I, I so, bird yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Evan, Evan, birds bring babies. Oh, of course, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, my fragile perspective on the world. And they tend to have smaller shoulders. So, women's arms hang to the side because they don't have to be, because shoulders don't force them out, but they get forced out by the hips. These are, again, very exaggerated shapes. But you can see in these silhouettes how one looks distinctly masculine and one looks distinctly feminine, just based on the angle at which the arms hang which is a result of the ratio between pelvis and ribcage. So basically, I'm gonna build a figure off of this gesture using the mannequin that I established earlier. So from this, I can, so here's the halfway point, I can draw in the ribcage. This one's gonna be a guy, a really skinny guy. 
because they're my favorite thing to draw. Halfway point again. So again, so half of the bottom of the rib cage, half of the base of the pelvis. I'm going to draw a box to represent the pelvis. And I'm going to connect in the legs about halfway through the box by drawing more boxes. And I'm actually going to taper these boxes so that they get smaller as they go down. Because that's kind of how the human body works. Apply triangles to represent the feet. Connect this. And then I'm going to draw the shoulders. the shoulders. Boxes for the arms. And just a little suggestion for the hands, because they're not really that important right now. Another rectangle for the neck. Another sphere for the head. So this is the 2D representation of this figure. So you know how I said in perspective, so let's go back to perspective for a second. We can take all of these 2D shapes and convert them into 3D. So from cylinder, from rectangles, we're going to get cylinders. And these cylinders tell us which part of the body is in front of what other part. Because this curves this way, we know that this leg is in front of the pelvis. And because the pelvis here cuts in front of this leg, but this, the cylinder for this one curves out this way, we know that this leg is behind this cylinder, but is in, the thigh is in front of the shin. So here, if we take a box that's been cut along the diagonal, then you can use that to represent the foot. It's like a wedge. So here we see the top of the wedge. And so here, like, I'm not sure what, like, it's kind of confusing what to do with the rib cage here. But I know that I can see the top of the shoulders, like the backs of his shoulders here. And I can see where his neck goes into the and goes into his rib cage. So that means I know that the sphere for the rib cage is gonna be point is gonna be curved this way downwards. Again, just like the uh, just like the perspective stuff that I was going over before. And then the pelvis, I can see the top of the pelvis too. So curves this way. And then the arms, I can see the elbow and the shoulder goes in front of the rib cage like that. See, I'm just applying everything from the previous lesson to this one. It's just that instead of spheres and boxes, we're doing spheres and boxes that look kind of sort of like a person. Mostly cylinders though, mostly cylinders.